Have you ever found yourself at an event surrounded by an ocean of choices, armed with only a catalogue and realising you've no idea where to start? Let's assume a perhaps unlikely but illustrative scenario. Imagine that you are Hoptimus Prime, an ale-loving cyborg at a beer festival. You have all of the available beers in a catalogue along with their tasting notes, but no other way of figuring out your ideal beverage. What if there was a way to tap into the true essence of your cravings, a method that understands not just your words, but your intent? Welcome to the world of semantic search, where AI meets your palate and finding the perfect beer becomes an experience in itself. At Lucidate, we've brewed up an innovative solution that leverages the latest in vector databases, document stores, and language model integration with Langchain, transforming the search from a guessing game into a journey of discovery. Stay tuned as we dive into the mechanics of semantic search and showcase a revolutionary way to choose not just a beer, but the right beer every single time. Have you ever wondered why your search engine sometimes doesn't get what you're really asking for? That's because not all searches are created equal. Let's dive into the world of keyword search versus semantic search. Think of keyword search as the librarian of old days who gives you books based on the exact title you ask for. It's straightforward, relying on a catalogue and the specific words you give. It's like a padlock needing the exact key to open. Change a word and the results change dramatically. But what if you could have a conversation with your search engine? That's where semantic search enters the scene, like a savvy librarian who gets the gist of what you're asking for. It doesn't just match keywords, it understands natural language context and even the subtleties of human language like slang and idioms. With semantic search it's not just about the words you use, it's about what you mean. It considers user intent, making it a game changer for complex and conversational queries. While keyword search is like a trusty old map, semantic search is the latest GPS navigation system, constantly learning and adapting. So whether you're looking for the latest tech or a fruit pie recipe, semantic search will lead you to the right place. So the next time you're searching, remember, it's not just what you type. It's the ideas behind the words that matter. This is the evolution of search from keywords to concepts, bringing us closer to how we naturally communicate. How does all this work? Well, we need to encode all of the meaning in our words and phrases as numbers, known as embeddings. These word embeddings are at the core of semantic search. They capture the very meaning of words. How are they built up? Well, back in the 1950s, a Cambridge linguist called John Firth noticed that words that are closely associated with each other in meaning are often surrounded by similar words in any text that you study. Colours like yellow and red are often surrounded by very similar words. Sure, with yellow perhaps having a higher frequency of the words corn and cowardice near it, and red being more commonly associated with blood and anger. But broadly speaking, the words that represent colours are surrounded by similar words in similar spots. John Firth coined the phrase, you shall know a word by the company it keeps. AI researchers working on NLP projects exploited this concept and came up with the idea of word embeddings, a foundational concept in LLMs, the transformer architecture and AI like Claude2 and ChatGPT. Here's how it works. We use a neural network and back propagation to generate the encodings. If you're unfamiliar with neural networks and backpropagation, we've got you covered. There's a link in the description to a playlist and a card linking to this playlist on your screen right now. Firstly, encode the words using one hot encoding. This gives every word a unique 
orthogonal code in a massive vector space. The length of the one hot encoded vector will be the size of your vocabulary. Then get a truly insane amount of text, a huge corpus, terabytes of the stuff, and feed it into a neural network with just three layers. The neural network is going to be trained to correctly predict the middle word in a sequence of words. For the sake of this example, let's say that that sequence is 60 words long. So the first layer is an input layer that takes in our sequence of words as one hot encoded vectors. So this will be 30 words before the word we're trying to predict and the 30 words that immediately follow. The middle layer of the feedforward network will have as many neurons as you want elements in your word embedding vector. A common choice is 512. The output layer will have one neuron for every word in our vocabulary. Each neuron will represent a word that we're trying to predict. You then start by feeding in sequences of text. In this case, as we said, 60 words at a time with the middle word blanked out and the goal is to get the output layer to determine the missing word. Now, at first, with randomly initialized weights in the network, the output will be horrible. But as you show the network more and more words and get it to nudge its weights and biases, it will start to get better. After an insane amount of training, maybe millions of epochs, the weights will converge to their optimum values. Now, the really clever thing here that freaks people out is that once the network is trained, the words that are similar and hence surrounded by similar sorts of words will have very similar weights connecting them to the hidden layer of the network. Why would this be? Well, it's because the network is optimized to predict words based solely on the words that surround them. What this means is that you can use the weights in the hidden layer that connect to each element in the output layer as the embedding vector for that word. Given the context of the surrounding words, only certain words will make sense as predictions. As the amount of surrounding words decreases, then typically more predicted words will be possible. And this is why we start with a large number of words, 30 before and 30 after. And as the context of surrounding words changes, the permissible predicted words will change also. More freaky still is that these embeddings not only capture how similar the words are, but the, in the vector space, you can add and subtract words that reflect their semantic and linguistic associations. One of the more common ways to describe this is to take the vector for the word king, subtract the vector for the word man, add the vector for the word woman, and you get queen. All this means that we don't have to match keywords anymore. Instead, we can use the mathematical similarity between sequences of words. A common mechanism for vector similarity is cosine similarity, the formula for which is shown on your screen. This number can vary between one, meaning identical, to minus one, completely opposite, with zero being totally unrelated. The example on your screen is in three dimensions. Now, for word embeddings, this would be in a much, much higher dimensional space. But the mathematics remains the same, and it's easy to scale up from three dimensions to 512 with a powerful GPU. Now, Optimus Prime is an avid and attentive watcher of Lucidate's videos, so he's quickly able to rustle up an application hooked up to a large language model using Langchain. Furthermore, he's able to take the details of the beers available at the beer festival and put them into a doc store. This means he has a natural way to query the data without having to worry about precise keywords. Here are some examples of natural ways that Hoptimus can query the data with examples of the keywords that have a strong cosine similarity. His search term need not contain any of the actual words in the tasting notes at all as long as the words he uses are similar in meaning in order to get a high match. You've seen semantic search in action, a marvel, not just for beer aficionados, but also for those who navigate the complex waters of finance.
Imagine you're at the helm of an asset management firm. Every day, a tsunami of reports, market data, and news threatens to swamp your decision making. Here's where Semantic Search shines, cutting through the noise to deliver the insights you crave. Or perhaps you're in investment banking where the speed and precision of your information retrieval can make or break a deal. Semantic Search isn't just a tool, it's your scout navigating the terrain, bringing back intelligence that's spot on. Across sectors, this technology isn't just an upgrade, it's a transformation. It streamlines operations, sharpens strategy, and enhances decision making. And it's not just about efficiency, it's about staying ahead in a world where understanding is power and speed is currency. Don't let your questions go unanswered. Reach out to Lucidate to schedule a consultation and see how semantic search can transform your business. And for those wanting to take a deeper dive, consider joining Lucidate's YouTube membership. Members at the managing director level and above get exclusive access to the source code for the Semantic Search app demo, as well as a technical walkthrough video. Let's turn information into understanding together. This has been Richard Walker from Lucidate showing the power of Semantic Search. Stay tuned for more innovations where AI meets finance. And as always, Happy searching.